welcome to Baiju's 9th and 10th grade channel. I'm your teacher Aishwarya and in this video of Concept Bites, we are going to be exploring the topic epithelial tissues. And we will do this particular topic in just under 15 minutes. So I hope all of you here are excited for this video and if you are, do show me your love by hitting that like button and if in case you have not subscribed to the channel yet, do not forget to hit the subscribe button so that you get regular notifications. So students, without wasting any more time, we'll get started. Now, of course, if you want to have a good understanding of what are epithelial tissues, we must have a basic foundational understanding of what do we mean by the term tissues, right? So now we know that tissues are nothing but they are a group of cells. And we know that these are a group of cells that are similar in their structure and that come together to perform a common function. And now in the case of multicellular organisms like plants and animals, we do find tissues. So keeping this basic idea in mind, I'd like to ask you a question. I'm sure that there would have been days when you were probably walking on the road, maybe you're going back home with your sc from school and you're going back home and suddenly there is a downpour of rain. What would you do? The first thing that you do is to make sure that you're not fully drenched in the rain and you try to get yourself to a shelter. Now in that process, of course, at one point, our clothes become wet, right? And the clothes become wet because our clothes absorb the water. But what happens to our body? Does our body absorb the water as well? What do you think? You can give me an answer yes or no right now by maybe thinking to yourself. Now in case your answer is going to be no, and I know most of you would say that. Have you ever wondered why is it that water is not getting absorbed by our body, but it's getting absorbed by the clothes? Well, it's simply because our skin that is there is made up of a specialized kind of tissue that ends up making it waterproof. And we see that our body is not just made up of one kind of tissue, but we have four broad categories of tissues that we find within our body. And not just in us, but in all animals, which is why we call it as animal tissues. Now, these four categories of animal tissues include epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue and nervous tissue. Now, if you look at it, they broadly serve four major functions. Now, the primary function of the epithelial tissue is to provide protection to the body. So, just like how a chocolate would have a chocolate wrapper to protect what is there on the inside, our body also has epithelial tissue that acts as a protective covering. Now, next up, we have connective tissue. Now, connective tissue is a very broad category of tissues and we see that there are various kinds that come under connective tissue. But they serve the basic function that is to connect and bind different parts of the body together. Now, next up, we know that our body, especially animals, exhibit movement. So, how are we able to move? We are able to move not just stiffly but rather to an extent, we can move flexibly as well because of the presence of muscular tissue, which is why their primary function is to provide movement. And in order to coordinate all the activities that happen internally and externally, we see that we require the nervous tissue whose main responsibility is to do coordination. So broadly, if you see, we have four broad categories of tissues which carry out four very important functions. So today, of course, we will be exploring the topic of epithelial tissues. Now, before we get started, right? So we've learned that in plants, they have a structure called as the epidermis. So just like how the epidermis serves as a protective tissue in plants, the epithelial tissue serves as a protective tissue in animals. Now, this could be a very important point of comparison that can come in the examination where they will ask you to differentiate between epithelial tissue and epidermis. So presence of these tissues in which organism is very important for all of you to know. So please star mark this particular point. So we understand that the epithelial tissue that is there is a protective tissue. Now we see that the epithelial tissue is made up of a continuous sheet of cells. That means that these cells are arranged one after the other and we see that there are no spaces present between the cells. So this space that exists between the cell is what we call as intercellular spaces. And we see that they are arranged continuously to form one continuous tube, right? Or one continuous structure. Now, this is what also contributes to its protective function. 
Now we see that the epithelial tissue that is there forms the outer covering of body parts and also in some cases they form the inner linings as well. Right, so this is a point that we also need to understand. Now broadly we may think that okay epithelial tissues they are providing protection which means that all throughout our body we have one kind of epithelial tissue. That's absolutely not the case because we see that there are various types of epithelial tissue that we find in our body. And broadly we can categorize the epithelial tissue based on its appearance and based on its appearance we can categorize epithelial tissue as squamous epithelium, columnar epithelium and cuboidal epithelium. While on the other hand, based on the number of layers of cells we find, right, or number of layers of the tissue, we can categorize them as simple epithelial tissue or stratified epithelial tissue. Now, simple epithelial tissue means that there is only one single layer of epithelial tissue. While if I say stratified, that means there are various strata or we see that there are various layers that are there, right? So, multiple layers that we find. Now, if I interchangeably use the word epithelial tissue or epithelium, they are more or less the same thing, right? So, we say epithelium, epithelial lining or epithelial tissue in order to address this protective tissue. So, let's explore in greater detail about each of these tissues. Now, if you notice, right, if I just go back to the previous uh, image, you see that these are the cells of the epithelial tissue, right? These are the cells that make up the epithelial tissue. But we also see that there is a membrane, right? So we see that there is a membrane that is present beneath them. Now this particular membrane that we observe is what we call as a basement membrane. Now this particular basement membrane that is there is a thin fibrous supporting structure on which different cells of the epithelial tissues are placed, right? Now what is the function of a basement membrane? Why do they require this? So firstly we see that they provide physical and biochemical cues for the overlying cells and we also see that they protect so they separate the underlying tissues from the above part. So if an epithelial tissue is able to provide or if it is able to carry out its protective functioning, it's also because of the presence of this basement membrane that separates the epithelial cells from the other tissues that are present beneath it. So that is why the basement membrane right here is very important. Now first and foremost, let's get started with the type of epithelial tissue based on its appearance. Now, the first kind of epithelial tissue that we will learn about is simple squamous epithelium. Now, simple squamous epithelium. So, the word squama means scale of skins, right? It means it is scaly. It is extremely thin and flat. So, we see that the cells of the squamous epithelium is flat and we see that they tend to have a prominent nucleus. So this what you see right here, right? So let me just mark this. So what you see right here is the top view of the squamous epithelial tissue. While if you were to look at it from the side, it would appear something like this. So we see that they have a flat cell, right? Uh, and we see that they are, they have a prominent nucleus as well. Now, of course, we see that this particular kind of tissue is normally found in the inner linings of the mouth. We find it in the inner linings of the alveoli, in the linings of the esophagus, and of course, in the lining of the blood capillaries. So, structure followed by location is also very important to remember. Now, of course, I told you right from the beginning that the main function of the epithelial tissue is to carry out protective functioning. That means their main function is to provide protection. But understand that epithelial tissue does not only provide protection. Different types of epithelial tissue also contribute to some other functions. So now we saw that these particular cells are flat and thin and they are found in some inner linings like in the case of alveoli or in the case of blood capillaries which is why some of the functions that they are also able to support is the movement of substances, right? So we see that because simple squamous epithelium is a single layer, right? And we've been discussing about simple squamous. So we see that because they are a single layer of flat cells, they also help in the movement of substances. It could be either in the form of diffusion, wherein we know that there is movement of substances from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration, right? Or also in the movement of certain other substances, right? Maybe in the form of filtration and so on. 
So understanding that because of their structure, they are able to contribute to some other functions is also important to understand. So remember that in alveoli and in the blood capillaries, process of diffusion or gaseous exchange takes place and the squamous epithelium have a very important role to play. So this was all about simple squamous. Now in the case, we see that there is also stratified squamous epithelium. That means this is a single, simple squamous was a single layer. But in some case, we also observe that there are multiple layers as well. And we see that when there are multiple layers, like in the case of our skin, they end up forming stratified squamous epithelium in order to protect our body from wear and tear. Which is why we see that there are multiple layers of the same. Now we will move on to the second type of it which is cuboidal epithelium. Now from the very name itself you are able to understand that these cells have a cube like structure with a prominent nucleus that is more or less present in the center. Now normally we find them in the inner linings of the kidney tubules and the ducts of the salivary glands. Now what are ducts? Ducts are nothing but tubes that connect your salivary glands and take it all the way till the target site or the mouth in this particular case. Now the major functioning of this particular uh, cuboidal epithelium is of course to provide protection but also provides me mechanical support, right? More su sturdy support in this particular case especially in the kidney tubules and in the salivary glands or in the salivary ducts. Now moving on to the third type which is columnar epithelial tissue. Again, when we say columnar, so from the name you see that they have column-like cells or pillar-like cells where the nucleus is more or less present towards the base of the cells, right? And we see that they are normally found in the inner linings of the intestine and of course we see that normally in the villi we find them, right? So apart from providing protection, we also observe that they allow or they facilitate Understand that we are using words like facilitate. So when we say facilitate, that means it provides or it helps out or it aids in that process, right? So here we see that they aid in the process of absorption in the small intestine. And of course, we see that there are certain modified versions of the columnar epithelial tissue that we find within our body. But primarily, if you look at the structure of the columnar epithelial cells, they are pillar-like. Where do we find them? In the inner linings of the intestine. What is their function? To allow or facilitate absorption and secretion to take place in the intestinal region. Now we see there are some modified versions of columnar epithelium. And one such kind is ciliated columnar epithelium. Now ciliated columnar epithelium means that they have these specialized hair-like cytoplasmic projections, right? So they have hair-like cytoplasmic projections from the cell called as cilia. And we see that these cilia are hair-like structures which have the ability to lash back and forth. And we see that they are normally found in the inner linings of the respiratory tract. And here, because of the lashing, back and forth lashing movement of cilia, we see that they help get rid of suspended particles and mucus that is there. So this is one type of cells that we observe, right? So this is an important thing to know. They are found, cilia is found in the free ends. They have a rhythmic movement that allow for substances to move back and forth. Found in the linings of the trachea, in the oviduct, so on and so forth. Now the next kind of it and the last kind that we see is column glandular epithelium, right? So we see that there is something called as glandular epithelium or glandular epithelial tissue. Now in some cases, like in the case of the salivary glands or maybe in, you know, certain cases, let's take the example of salivary gland itself, right? We see that the epithelial tissue will fold inwards as you can see right here, I'll use another color. We see that the epithelial tissue will fold inwards and they'll end up getting specialized, right? Now they become a group of specialized cells and we see that these group of specialized cells have the ability to secrete certain substances, right? So if this is your epithelial tissue, you see that they are folding inwards and now they are getting specialized. Now when they get specialized in order to secrete certain substances, we call them as glandular epithelial cells, right? And especially in the inner linings of the intestine and so on, we find this particular tissue. Now we see that glands are cells that can secrete substances and they, call, they get specialized and they get called as gland cells. So this is about an extension that you need to know. 
Now, whenever you are learning tissues, it is important that you learn about its structure, you learn about its function and its location. Because if you have learned these three, the whole concept of tissues becomes very simple and easy, right? So quickly to summarize, we have learned about the epithelial tissue where we learned about squamous epithelium, cuboidal epithelium, we learned about stratified epithelium and columnar epithelium along with the different types that were there. We saw that squamous mainly provides protection, also allows diffusion. Cuboidal epithelium mainly helps with mechanical support. Stratified epithelium provides protection. Columnar epithelium of course helps with absorption and we learned about the extensions of the two which was going to be the glandular epithelium and the stratified epithelium, I mean the ciliated epithelium. So with the students, I hope that all of you have understood epithelial tissue very clearly. If there is any parts that you have not understood, any doubts that you may have, you can let me know in the comments of this video. But if you understood the concept and if in case you already knew it and you just wanted a quick revision and if this video really helped you, please do let us know in the comments because you know Baiju's 9th and 10th has got you covered. For more such interesting videos, please do hit the subscribe button as well because as you know, we come up with such innovative videos short, crisp revisions that will definitely help you out. And if you enjoyed the way we teach and the way we make sure that you understand everything clearly with the best visuals, do not forget to like this video as well. Thank you so much for being a part of today's video. I will see you all soon. But up until then, take care, lots of love and bye-bye.